So playing devil's advocate here, how could you be on your dean so much? How could you be so focused on Islam and just still live a life of murdering, drug dealing, abusing? For me, I'm gonna say this. I use my religion more so as a crutch to deal with what I was doing in the streets. Like, I knew I was wrong. I knew it was wrong, it wasn't carnally sound, it wasn't morally sound. But you know what, God? And it might seem like a catch-22, but like, Lord, I, I love you so much. I thank you again for another day for me to get this money. What? Yeah. I do. I thank you for this client. I stuff for Allah, but thank you. He was a quick one. Thank you, Lord. He knew. So at the end of the day, all, all I can do is ask him for his protection. That's it. <laughs>
but it's that and the third, and I didn't understand why. Now that I'm older, I now know she was getting a check. Like you get a you get a check for kidmanship care, regardless. But I didn't know that at the time. And you know, I would just work. I started working at Dollar Tree, mm-hmm. and then of course, you working, you meet other people. Right. So, but I had my first job since six years old. My first job was was selling world famous chocolate Amos candy bars. I always been a hustler. Always. You know. So, and I always kept the nine to five because you need something to wash. It always had a brain, but it just wasn't quick enough. Did you feel betrayed by your parents? Of course. Of course. I had no business being outside like that. Right. Had I had the proper support. And the proper guidance, I would have never been in no gang, nothing. Have you ever felt betrayed by the gang? By the gang, no. Ignored, yeah. But definitely not betrayed. Like, I could call niggas up right now and, and ask to get fronted some shit. And it, it'll be there. But that's not the life that I live. Hmm. So, like, Unc, he, I ain't seen Unc in years, though. And I'm, I'm only calling him Unc because, I, like I said, I'm not going to name drop for the life of me. I don't care. But he's one of the original, original, original block hustlers. And when we would go to the studio and, and do business and sing certain things, he would always make sure, like, listen, I want to bring out, you know, First Lady I I. He told me there was this girl back in the day that they would try it with, but again, she was too busy fucking them to stay focused. You got to stay focused. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a boss. It's more, it's way more to me than just my lady parts. Mm. Like, they look at you like a bucket of chicken anyway. A breast, a wing, a thigh. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna get past anything. I already know that I'm pretty. Let's, okay, and next. You can be pretty and full of air. Right. What What's one thing that you learned about gangsters? Being around them all the time. They get, they actually really good men. Like, I mean, take care of their grandmoms. Kids never without. Pray. Like, sweethearts, gentlemen, chivalrous, tell you, teach you about things, put you on to knowledge, read books. They're quiet, humble dudes. Don't got to talk much. You feel me? That's, that was the most thing. People think, oh, you just a killer. You da 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 Your tattoos. This, this. Man, I know some niggas with face full of tattoos. And some of the most gentleman kind respectful guys you would ever meet. Yeah. Ever. That's interesting. And they just they just don't don't play with nobody. No, they just don't play. It's just no nonsense. Like I joke, I laugh, I have fun, you know, can keep, but I'm not gonna play with you. I'm not I don't know know who get there. I'm not a toy. You ever watched a woman get taken advantage of? Yes. Yes I did. Um, in the club, actually, which is ironic because it's supposed to be illegal there. But if you got certain regulars that pay a certain dollar, do a certain thing in the champagne room or the red room or whatever, and, like, it just make you angry. It makes what, what, you angry. Give me a situation. What happened? Um. So one time, I mean, we was at this club. It's, it's like a, I'm going to say the pink orchid. We was at the Pink Orchid, and homegirl was new. But she was wilding. She was too hype. And I knew she wasn't going to last long because that's all of that energy. Like, And I asked her, I said, yo, what you here for? She's like, yeah, got to bag and pay my shit. Like, she started reciting some song. I was like, what? Yeah. Nah, I didn't have no respect for Shorty. I said, yo, stay over there. Like, like seriously. Please don't come over here with that bullshit. Like yeah. this, this is not fairy tale land. I don't know where you think you at, but you gonna get hurt. So and she was young, whatever. She was getting drunker and drunker throughout the night. Now I don't drink and I don't smoke like at all, especially when I'm working. Mm-hmm. I know how to be like lit and turned up with everybody, but I'm sober because mm-hmm. I need to be able to Mistake. assess. I'm sober. I don't. I don't play that. So mm-hmm. she's getting lit. She popping Molly. She. It's just a, a setup for a disaster. And I'm just watching her throughout the night as it's going on and on and on and on. The guy, he was actually one of my regulars, to be honest. Um, but she was so, I guess, drunk that he took her into the champagne room. And I guess she was trying to get serious. Like, no, no. After she did all of that all night long. And he just took it. Mm. Girl never came back. First day. First day. Last day. Last day. Wow. Never can't. Some some of this shit ain't for you. That girl probably need therapy now. 
Like, and I'm not gonna lie, people probably say I need therapy. I'm fucked up in the head because this certain shit just don't phase me. I can't even see you in that environment. You just see yeah. so. <laughs> I, I think that's the first time you smiled this interview. It's the first time I've smiled this interview. Yeah. You seem so business about you, whatever. I, I am, though. I always and have been. How do you turn that on? And, and, and it's like a job. Entice a guy. And... Yes. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say numerology because that's her. I'm not going to say her real name either because, like I said, I'm not name dropping. But numerology, she's the one who literally put me on to the finesse. Because mm. I was too hard. I was too, I was so angry. Like, mm. I had that hunger in me. And she was like, no, baby, you can be hungry, but you got to do it soft. Mm. Like, you see him over there? You want that money, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. She's like, all right, watch this. She put me on to how to soften it. Like, when my softness is a job. It is a job. Just like when I used to teach, I used to teach history at high school. Mm. I had to wear a suit because it is a job. Anything you do, being a parent, it is a job. Like, right. you you switch the hat to fit the role. Right. But you don't let the role make you. Have you ever done anything that was even against your morals? Yeah, strongly, strongly. Dancing alone is against my morals. Oh. I, I hated it. I hated it. Selling crack, I hated it. The only thing that I was cool with was the weed. And even then, once they started doing shit to the weed, I didn't like that. Like, I used to serve a fiend, walk past, go get some chicken or something, go somewhere, chill, whatever, come back, nigga slumped on a curve. EMT's getting them. I got to go back to my plug, like, yo, you got to cut that shit, bro, because that shit hit hard. Too on hard. my Too fucking hard. You done killed three of my Like, that is real. That's real shit. I done served fiends that was pregnant. I know I can clearly see that you have a baby in your belly, and I don't give a fuck. So that, again, is, is more so the willing of the mindset. You got to put your, your mind in a certain place to do certain things. Mm. So. What happened when the indictment came on OBH? When that indictment came, Well, man. before we get to the indictment, I want to ask you, OBH is... What did it mean to the culture, especially like the culture of hip hop? I know I've heard, um, I've heard the name before, and I'm not even from Philly. I've probably yeah. been to Philly two, three times, but <laughs> even I know, you know yeah. what I'm saying. That this is a well-respected gang, and it, so talk to me a little bit about the respect that y'all garnered. Talk to me a little bit about what it meant to be OBH. What it meant in to Philly. be OBH in Philly, like really OBH, GG, like Goonie Gang family. Like, literally, all of my niggas, most of them were, like, literally nephews and cousins, like, family members, literally. Then Goonie Gang came from as so to, like, the little niggas and, like, the family, friends, and they were more like Goonie Gang. But, like, Unk is really Ab's brother. And, you know, Leek Moss is really his, like, they are really family. Like, you feel me? Like, you know, free my nigga Moolahs, yo, that was my guy. He was the only young boy that was the same type time as me, same age as me and everything. Like, Bras too, free him too. Like, free, free, just free the gang. Like, I'm always, I'm a die screaming that shit. Cause like I said, these these are good men. These, these are men that changed me, that made me calm down, that made me be humble, that made me realize, listen, Salah is not a game. Look, you need to do this. Listen, take your money and do that. Invest in it, like, really, actually teach me about life. Like, you don't come across people like that. Like, you know, most people is dummies or they just users. So playing devil's advocate here, how could you be on your dean so much? How could you be so focused on Islam and just, you know, and, and still live a life of murdering, drug dealing, abusing? Um... It's an interesting question because I used to get a lot of um, back shit for garbing and going to the strip club and then dancing and then coming off the strip club, taking my wig off and putting my guards back on. But again, like I said, your religion is for you, my religion is for me, and we all fall short of the glory of God. Everybody. So, you know, there's, <laughs> I studied Saddam Hussein for a long time. He actually may have been a grand masochist terrorist, but that man prayed five times a day. He followed his religion. He read his Quran, like, <laughs> you feel me? 
So I can't even, for me, I'm going to say this. I use my religion more so as a crutch to deal with what I was doing in the streets. Like, I knew I was wrong. I knew it was wrong. It wasn't carnally sound. It wasn't morally sound. But you know what, God? And it might seem like a catch-22, but like, Lord, I, I love you so much. I thank you again for another day for me to get this money. What? Yeah. I do. I thank you for this client. A stuff all over, but thank you. He was a quick one. Thank you, Lord. Like that. You use God as a way to continue to do what you're doing. Basically, and then... Instead of using him <sighs> to sort of stop you from doing what you're doing. Because when I think about mm -hmm. whether you want to say religion, whether you want to say God, or whatever it be, right? and it's for discipline. It's so that I don't continue to make the wrong decisions. It's so that I can sit back and really be in tune with who my what my body is telling me and who God what God is telling me. You know what I'm saying? And right. that when I do repent, it's because like you said, we all fall short. Right. But I know you know this, you have to go to Allah with a, a pure heart. Yeah. He knows when you're just saying it to him just so you can get, go right back out and do it again. Yeah. You and that's why I was called and probably I'm still going to get called all kind of fake Muslims, fake this. Ah. But listen, let me, let me tell you this. Especially in Philly, because a lot of people yeah, are Muslim in Philly but now. A lot and this of is people, the murder capital. Of yeah, Philly, you know, so, that's what I'm but, saying. All right, but finish your saying. I'm going to be real. Philly is just a fashion statement, if you ask me. So it's just a fashion statement. Like, and that's what disgusts me about it. That's why I'm here like this today. Because it doesn't matter. He does not look at what you wear, but what is in your heart. I can't stress that enough. Mm. I can't, like, God knew that what I was going to do, the cutter of a law, which is the, the written way of a law, was already happened when I was in my mother's 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 womb. He already knew. He knew how many packs I was going to move, what day I was going to stop, what day he knew. So at the end of the day, all, all I can do is ask him for his protection. That's it. Lead me to the right path. God give me discernment that I don't serve the wrong thing. That's all I can ask. Show me who's a cop and who's a op. But well, why not ask him to bring you away from it. I did. I mean, things happen in, in not our timing, but like in lives timing, but then also you make decisions. Mm. So me segueing into my music or me, you know, taking my boxing seriously or, you know, me painting because I also do graphs. So, you know, at night, spray paint the city, just something else. Like, because even the Bible, the Bible says that your gifts will make room for you. So I pick and choose which gift that I'm going to use to make room for me. All right. So let's go back to the game. Okay. Okay. All right. Y'all running it up. Y'all getting all this money. What does OVH mean to the culture of hip hop? Y'all, y'all name is starting to buzz. You know, I know like rappers are saying it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You could sort of feel like the clout. Increasing, I'm yeah. sure. But no, no, yeah. niggas left us in the hood. It was a dog. Where, where we belonged. <laughs> wow. Because it's a dub. You don't want all that trash wow. coming through your hood. Like, even when Drake said, second floor of Tissy's getting shoulder rubs, mm -hmm. busting the AR app, nigga, listen, you not taking the AR app, where you going? You can't. That mentality, first of all, that old money that they got isn't even real money compared to them niggas will come through, slap through, get ideas, get lyrics. Get hooks. Get the get the slang. Get the slang. Get the swag, and then take it right back mainstream to where they belong. Mm. You're not taking no real murder. You're not. You're not. You're not going on tour with a nigga that's really out here moving soap for real, like literally in the sesh, leaving because his phone is chirping. You're not. You can't go where I'm going, mm. and I don't blame them. Like I mean, you know. Cassie still show love, you know, niggas still show love, Jada Kids still show love, you know. I just did my feature with Trina, she still show love and shit like that. But like at the end of the day, niggas don't want to get killed. You don't you don't trust no shit like that. Like these niggas is really, they are not plaguing. It's not a game. Like when you hear the stories like about little niggas like K Flock and all of that in an Uber or a Lyft and really did that shit, like the computer can't track your Uber or your Lyft, like it's not on a GPS, you're dumb. 
how did you escape jail time? Why aren't you in jail? Because I, that's what the viewer is going to say. You're the lady, the first lady of OBH. You know what I'm saying? How the hell is everybody in jail and you're not? Let me tell you something. I still keep in contact with my niggas. I write my niggas and all that. Niggas is happy that I'm free. Okay? Because that's a part of being first lady. You got to keep the, mil the wheels turning, the mobile moving. I'm the one that's checking in. I'm the one that's linking up. I'm keeping my eyes peeled, and I'm keeping it hushed. If niggas call me, they know where I'm at. But for those who have that question, truly, honestly, it's none of your business. That's how I'm free, mm. because you don't know that. Mm. You don't know what I did, where I've been, how what, pe what favors people owe me for my freedom. Mm. That's why I'm here talking freely, showing my face, being who I am, because I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm protected. I'm anointed, first of all, before anything. And touch not my anointing and do my profit no harm. So how about that? Hmm. Well, there goes that. <laughs> <laughs> there goes that. Okay. So the indictment comes. What, what's going through your mind? What's going through the, the team's mind, the family's mind? What, what's going on back at the track? What's going on with the money? What? Everything slows up? What, what's happening? Everything. I'm going to be honestly, really for real, for real, it's damn near dead now because, like uh -huh. I said, like that structure, that, that business-minded orientation is not built. Like, you know, we're dealing with a bunch of niggas that really didn't have, that was relying on people's loyalty that ended up falling. And then what got me tight about the indictment was that it wasn't even really work. It was just soap. But even still, they're going to give you time for that like that's what gets me aggravated about the situation the traps start falling through niggas start running their mouths putting themselves in situations they didn't handle business talking some niggas even start reneging the whole shit in general what i ain't obh i ain't never been blah, 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 blah. like you get all kind of niggas do different things when they get scared like and then the family is devastated like you gotta remember these men have real life like my nigga mullahs had his first daughter his first baby girl didn't even get the chance to see her raised. So, so coming from OBH, when you see something like uh, like a YSL, uh, and you see like a gunner situation and this, that, and the third, what do you, what do you, what's your take on that? Is is it like this is snitching? Is it like no plea deals? You you got to understand how plea deals work. How, Listen, what's your thoughts? I'm I'm here to tell you that it ain't none of that shit going. Niggas couldn't pay me to speak up on anything mm. about my gang, my set, my hat, my plug, my nothing. It's not happening. You're going to have to kill me. Like, <laughs> that's just it. Because at the end of the day, those things only occur from an insider. An in, a person inside right next to you running their mouth. That's not happening to somebody that real life got respect for you, mm. real life care about you. Real life took cases of Similac and Pampers to your aunt's doorsteps for your kids because you was caught up in some shit, cutting down a key for a, a few hours. That's, that's real life. N niggas is not doing that. Like, you, you sitting here speaking on things that you don't have a space to speak on is, is what really gets me tight. And then with the whole YSL, man, free young thug. That's how I feel about it. We got freedom of speech. I'm an artist. I'm liable to say anything. I'm liable, I'm liable to paint anything. And it's no way that we have these laws such as freedom of speech. And, you know, Elon Musk can tweet on Twitter about the swastika and Kanye West and isn't locked up. Yeah. But the moment that a man say that he did something and it could be make believe, all of a sudden now we got an investigation. Mm -hmm. Like that's not fair. So if we're going to do that, then we should do it all the way around. One would argue that Elon Musk isn't sell <laughs> selling cocaine in women's vagina. But I do see a point. <laughs> hey, yo. I do see a point. I do see a point. Okay. So, when, 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 when all of this happens, where, where do you stand? Where do you stand? Um, I are stand you, at the forefront. Are you, are you still trapping... Uh, women in the house? No. Or at, the, at this point, have you just moved on to yeah, other like, things? I've been doing the family thing. Okay. Um, because that's my question too. Is yeah. Like, does gangbanging have an age limit? 
No, I don't think so. Can 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 you be fifty years old gang banging? <laughs> yes. A serious question. You could be fifty years old still selling weed on the same block for thirty years. Right. Like cops know you and all that. I've seen it. Okay. So like, but the gang is more like an organization. Yeah, it's more like um, not even just clout, respect. It's more like. It's a it's a set. It's a set level where people know a boundary not to cross. And then also it's just this aspect of like business oriented and like certain things that you need. Like I can't go everywhere screaming OBH, like you feel me? But then at the end of the day, I will never deny that. I will never lie about that. That's who I was, I don't care. I'm not gonna sit here and say that wasn't me or this, that, and the third. That's how I became such the good mother that I am. You know, have being you being random. Hmm? Have you ever been in prison? Yes, I have. Okay, so the first time I got imprisoned, it was because someone tried to sue me for breaking the eye socket. Um, and then the Why second- did you break your eye socket? I was fighting and she decided to attack me, her and her baby father, actually. And I got the best of both of them. So the only thing that they could do was press charges and sue. But aren't your hands licensed? Yeah, now. Oh, it wasn't licensed? It wasn't before. Okay. So like now I can't really do that. Um, and the second time that I was actually booked, it was because I wouldn't talk. I, I, I exercised my, my, my right to remain silent. Oh. Okay. And so how, you didn't have to do much time? No, I mean, I would say four weeks is, any, any amount of time is, a stamp, is an ample amount of time, but like four weeks with two years probation and, okay. you know, stuff like okay. that. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, community service right. and, you know, but I got paid lawyer expunged so I don't have no record. Like, I still, now I work at a hospital. So, you know, wow. stand up nine to five, regular, regular, schmegular. One of, one of them girls walk, walk in the uh, hospital one day and see you and, <laughs> hey, ain't you, you know what I mean? What, what do you say back? I'll be like, it depends on the situation. I'm, I'm sure you've seen these women that. Oh yeah, there. for sure, for sure. What is those conversations like? It's sometimes, some of them is, yo, I thank you. Some of them are doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. Written books, they're porn stars now, they're making good money online, you know what I'm saying, in Dubai and shit. Like, you know, but some of them didn't take the knowledge from the game that I'm trying to give and they got caught up with those distractions, right. such as drugs, right. such as the men, right. such as the, the, the goal is to stay focused have on you your goal. Sex, have you ever had sex with money? Yes, I have. Have. And was this like after the strip club or was this like on the fly or was this like a call this number and you can link? No, it was a more so of how can I be running this if I've never done this? So let me see what this feels like so that I can be in that position. Really? Yeah. 17? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to make you do something that I've never done. That's, to, that's corny to me. Say who did it the first time you did it. The first time that I did it? Yeah. Um... So it was Backpage. I remember that. Back in the day, we had Backpage. I did episode. Yep. Um, and the person who was supposed to leak, this is actually how I ended up running it myself because the boy that was doing it was getting high. He was sniffing coke and smoking wet. So he ended up falling asleep. What's yeah. butt? Huh? What's butt? You said smoking butt? No, wet. Dust. Oh, oh dust. Okay. Dippers. Okay. Like he dipped his cigarette in it and then would smoke it. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna be blurring this out? Cause it's kind of X-rated. But no. Oh, all right. But anyway, so um, long story short, short story short, the nigga passes out. He falls asleep, and he falls asleep. So I took the I took the trap home, and I was kind of getting irritated as to why the girl that I was working with was getting all the dates, but they was using my pictures. Hmm. So I'm thinking to myself, like, you don't think that they got, they're not going to peep when they get here? That yeah. She's not that body? Like, she don't have no tattoos? She, I would always wonder that. I always on wonder. Backpage. But I think what it is is that she don't care. I'm about to say, you're already you're here. here. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you already Fuck here. It. I mean, your ass wasn't this so fat in the pictures, exactly, but, but I ain't about I mean, to say no to some pussy. So, feel me? But, boom. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. The girl, she actually used to suffer from stomach problems 
from all of those clients. Like, like I said, people don't talk about the dark side of, of sex working. So she was like, yo, I can't do it, this, that, and the third. So I was like, all right, well, okay. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going, I'm going, you know, see what this is about. It can't be that bad. So, I, whatever, I had a white dude. Oh, my God. Fat, white, Greek nigga. Mm. Stunk, yo. Stunk ass nigga, yo. And all he wanted me to do was play with his nipples and, like, spit on him, like, degrade him and shit. Yeah. For $600. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, shit, I could do this. Yeah. So, like, I'm doing it or whatever, and then, like, he leaves and everything, and he was like, oh, hey, like, you know, I want to I wanna um, do this again. I really liked you, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, all right, well, all right, well, you know, take my number. But then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, shit, I can't give this nigga my number because I, I made this date on Backpage through the Bulls' phone. This nigga done passed out. And, like, I'm thinking about all the series of events. So I'm like, okay, so I give him the number. Now, I'm counting the money. Of course, you know, the, the fucking coke nigga can wake up when the, when the date, after the date left. Okay, of course he can hear me counting the money. So he's like, oh, so that's what you're doing now, passion, da 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 I was like, no, I just was trying to help out such and such. Right. And he was like, well, since you did it, give me my money. I said, your money? What? Now, mind you, I'm a kid, so I'm not under. I never even understood the concept of this, the 42. I didn't know right. nothing about the cut, none, none of that. Right. So I'm like, what are you talking about? This is mine. He gave this to me. This, mm. that, and the third, and he tipped me right. on top of it. I said, nigga, you're not getting shit. Da, 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 all this other stuff. So I'm cussing him out. Blah blah blah. blah. We fighting or whatever the case may be. This nigga punched me right in my mouth. Like clean in my mouth. That was it for me. I said, look, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hold up. Oh. Man, I can't do that. These bitches are getting punched. Oh. No. I'm good. I'll be the house mother, though. You gave me the I'll money. I'll be the madam. So you gave him the money. No, nah, I didn't give him shit, but I got my ass beat. Okay. I wasn't giving him a ting. Okay. Like, then I had to send my niggas. It was a, that's, that was a whole situation. Okay, so that's a, that's a, that's a time when you didn't have to actually have sex was there a time you had to oh actually... when i actually did have to have sex i was uh, about 21 22. oh it's just three le- three four years later yeah like three four years later but then the, the, my his, my situation had changed i was living in atlanta this oh. time and i didn't know nobody i don't got my gang to rely on i don't know none of these people and the quickest way that i know that to get it is to just charge like 500 an hour, 600, whatever, and a thousand for this. So that's what I did. Yeah. And then I felt so nasty wow. afterwards. Wow. I felt so low, degraded, humiliated. Like I just, I didn't even want the money because I was like, damn, like that did not feel good mm. at all. The nigga was calling me all kinds of whatever. And I couldn't be mean or mad like I would in my money. normal self money. because business. it's business. Yeah. Yeah. So I realized that I could not do that. Like, and then um, I'm going to say that summer, that was when I was drugged for wow. the first time. I got, I got drugged doing, yeah. doing that. And that's really what honestly turned me off from the whole sex, drugs, and cash lifestyle in general. Because yeah. I was in the hospital fighting for my sanity. Wow. Somebody put a Molly in my drink. Mm-hmm. And I literally, I bugged out. I woke up in the hospital four days later. They had me on all kind of antipsychotic meds, trying to bring me back. You know. How long do you think you were? Um, I was there for like I want to say fourteen days, but I didn't wake up and real and become coherent until the fourth day. Wow. But I struggled in and out of having psychosis right. for about two, three years after that. What would you tell like the OnlyFans girls? The girls that are just, you know, okay, well, they're not doing what y'all doing. Yeah. They're not, you know, selling their bodies or what, well, physically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is there still something that comes with it? Is there, what's your thoughts um, on I that game? I would say with OnlyFans game, now it's more so just your reputation. Mm-hmm. Like, and then it's become so popular nowadays. It's not, like, see, when I was coming up, it was taboo. That's mm-hmm. why I kept a nine to five. I know, it's so crazy. Like, I, I dare not let my grandmom know that I'm really 
a stripper. Like, mm-hmm. grandma, oh, I work at this restaurant. And I really have my uniform. And Because my grandma was the type to check. Well, yeah. do you? Yeah. Yes, grandma, here's my schedule. I really yeah. do work here. Like, that's why I'm working so late. And restaurants was always the gig for me because as a server, you have late hours. Mm-hmm. But I dare not come in the house without straight A's, regardless of what I was doing. Yeah, you, you said you graduated like, Magnus. Uh, yeah, I, ma- I went to Master Charter, Shoemaker Campus, and then I graduated Temple University class of 2016, 3.97 GPA. Right. Like, I dare not have let my left hand do what my right hand was doing. That's why I don't understand how nowadays it's just so, mm-hmm. like, I, I was ashamed. I was walking a walk of shame to go in these strip clubs, hoping to hide. I had a fake name, Passion. I didn't want people to know who I really was. Like, it really... Like, I don't know how it became so popular, but all I say is ladies that are doing it still, like on the OnlyFans or whatever, just protect yourself and have an end goal. Don't get caught up in the life. Like, I mean, I've had my diamonds. I've had my BMWs. I've had furs. I've been, like, I've traveled. I've, that, I've, I've enjoyed the luxuries of the lifestyle. But at the end of the day, that, that confidence and that, that worthlessness, that self-doubt that you feel, those suicidal thoughts that you get, those those homicidal thoughts that you feel, that violation that you have, there's nothing that can can soothe that. Nothing. You, you think they will have that? Those women? I know they will. Why do you say that? If not now, then or ever. And I mean, some people, some women are just born harlots now. I know some too, they just champs with it. Like, <laughs> no conscience, no gag reflex, no nothing. No walls, just... <laughs> Just nothing, you feel me? So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, it depends on the person. But for me, like, my goal ultimately at the end of this life is to go to heaven. Right. If, you know, that's what's after this. Mm. My goal is to have peace. Mm. It's to live a lifestyle of love, light, and prosperity. Mm. Those may not be a certain person's goal. Mm -hmm. Like, I know a woman, all she wanted was a Jag. Mm -hmm. That was it. She was in the game for a Jaguar. You speak so positively on the gang life, you know, you really do. Because it seemed like a place of refuge for you. It seemed like a sanctuary for you. It seems like a place where you met your brothers, your family, yeah. people that took care of you, people that were kind to you. So I ask you, is this something that you would recommend to inner city youth? Is this something you would recommend to your sons? Is this something that you could recommend to someone in your situation? Or would you tell them to take a different route? Damn, that's a kind of a hard question. No, I wouldn't recommend it, but if it came across me, I would give them the real. Like, I had this one girl tell me, she begged me. Oh, my God, this girl begged me to take her to the strip club, man. Begged me, begged me, begged me, begged me, begged me, and I kept telling her no, I kept telling her no, and eventually I was like, fuck it, come on, because you're just going to do it anyway, and you're going to do it the wrong way, and I'd rather to do it the right way. So here's, here's I'm going I'm, I'm to drop some gems, okay? To the ladies that want to know. If you really, truly are that fucking curious, okay? The first person and the only person and the most important person in that club that you need to know is the DJ. If you do not have a relationship with that DJ, you have no clients, you have no sales. That's number one. The second person, believe it or not, is going to be your house mom, your house mother. Gotta be some type of cordial with her. Some of them really don't give a fuck for you, regardless of what you do. Explain what a house mother is. So a house mother is, she just basically, she oversees it. She makes sure it don't get too much drama out the way, too much this. Everybody coming out looking right, smelling good, toes, nails checked. Okay, hair done. No, you got to sit down. You go get your shit together, then come back. You can't dance tonight. You know what you did. No, she keeps it in order. I was a house mom for two years at Studio 37, which has now since been closed. This is every strip club? Every strip club. Every single strip club has a house mom. Everyone. She runs the locker room. Hmm, I didn't know that. Uncle Clifford for the show. Um, what show is that? Cause or Snow, some show they got. Uncle Clifford is they house mom. So that right. Third person you need to know is your biggest security guard. I mean the biggest nigga you have in the club. You need to be cool with him, go on a couple of dates with him, butter him up, lavish him, whatever, chill, even be his friend, whatever is your avenue of finesse, whatever you do with that man, because if he loves you, he's going to protect your life, okay? Then, after that, come with your own Crown Royal bag to pick up your ones. Mm-hmm. Where your arm? Oh. Yeah, just put your arm down. 
Sorry. You're good. Have you ever had to have sex with the guy running the club or just for like a hookup? I know you said go on a couple of dates, but yeah, is, sometimes you have to just like have sex to like solidify your spot or just make it easier for yourself. Mm-mm. That's what I got bitches for because I'm not doing that. Mm. So you'll just get somebody else. Yeah, I'll get somebody else to do it. After I had that experience with the whole back page that um, I actually didn't believe it or not, I was celibate for most of my career. Wow. Yeah. Very much so. Because I got to the point where I was actually disgusted with men. And no, I wasn't gay. But I just couldn't. The idea of a male species would make my skin crawl. Because I couldn't believe that y'all got so much money, so much power, and this is what you do. If you could go back in time and change anything about your trap life or do something differently, what would it be? Um... I say I will focus more so on my business, my personal business, instead of promoting and pushing other people's. Because it took me a long time to actually get my own business acclimated because I was so busy promoting other people's work. I was so busy, you know, making sure that they was good, they were straight, that I didn't think about my own ideas. If you could talk to that young girl you know, walks in the strip club for the first time after getting evicted. What would you say to her? And then what would she say to you? I would tell her don't do it. Really? Yeah. Why? Because the fight for your sanity and the backlash that comes for that afterwards is going to cost you in a way that you don't even know. What if they say that? Well, that's you. Maybe it costed you. Maybe you didn't have the mental fortitude. Maybe you didn't have the mental wherewithal. Why? It, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be me. Right, and they can say that, but find out and see. That's, that's a risk that I'm just not willing to take ever again. And I stand here to, to tell you to save somebody's daughter, to save somebody's niece, whatever. I hope they show this video, whatever. You got to say, talk shit, do whatever. But at the end of the day, this is, the truth, the truth of the matter is, is going to affect you. It will affect you in some way, some shape or form. Like you can have some of the happiest moments in your life toasting champagne and in the back of your mind when you look out into the club, you're having a flashback. Will you go back to stripping? Fuck no. Not after the knee surgery I done had. Shit, <laughs> hell no. Right. Torminous, no. Oh, okay. Can't well, get me to do it. What would that young girl say back to you? She would say yes, ma'am. She would listen? Absolutely. I was very obedient. Wow. Very obedient. And nobody told you that? No. Nobody? And that, was the, that was the issue that I had. The gullibility from not knowing. Being so raised, sheltered, and hurt, and quiet, and that old school, don't ask, don't tell what happens in my four walls, stays in these four walls, made me an easy target for the streets. It made me so just gullible. You could tell me anything, because I didn't know. Like most children. Yeah. One might argue that the gang is used for protection so that you can navigate the hood, navigate street life, and not be alone, especially if you don't have a family at home. But then the catch-22 would be, well, what about all the beefs that I get into because of the gang? <laughs> Here I am joining something to protect myself, but the only reason why I have all of this beef is because of the people that's protecting me. Well, honestly, there's that. But the people that are protecting you, that are truly protecting you, will protect you. There are some who say, yeah, I got you, bro, and really know that he a throwaway. Like, and it's sad, because, damn, that ain't even my place to say, but, bro, you ain't even going to be here long. Mm. You don't even know it. You just a pick-up, pick, drop-off boy. Like, there are some that they keep around just because they stupid. And they already know that he's stupid, so he's going to do the bid. The dummy mission. Dummy mission. Yeah. You, you, you're going to do the bid. You're yeah. going to. You're not going to say shit because mm -hmm. you're, you're a dickhead. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. 
Well, talk to me about when you were at your highest. Do you remember that moment, what it felt like? When I first touched that brick, I smiled so hard. I felt like nothing could touch me. I was it. Like, I didn't have to put my pussy on nobody for it. And I don't got to break this shit down. And I'm about to go to the mall right now. Like, I was hyped. And I'll, I'll never forget, I was in Wine Dance. Wine Dance New York. I was like 19 or whatever. And I was with some boys or whatever. And they was like, yeah, you know, this, that, and the third. And you could take this and do you no know, go your way and we go ours. But the only problem that I had with it was that I had to drive it back down the highway. Mm-hmm. That was my only issue. So I was hyped because, you know, the money, you feel me? And you don't never really, rarely can niggas say that they seen the whole thing. You feel me? So I was like, what? Like, I felt blessed. This, that, and the third. You start to get a rush out of it. Like, I started, like, looking up um, different ladies that were madams. I, I started becoming obsessed, like, with this, like, hard body madam of these streets mentality. Like, Blanca was one of my favorite. Like, I looked up to her. Like, you know, all of these people. And while I'm driving back, I was shitless scared. Yeah. Petrified. Yeah. Any, any police, any whoop, anything. Man, I couldn't get rid of that shit fast enough. Right. After as happy as I was, that shit quickly went down. I was, hell no. What was your lowest point where you felt um, the life was sucked out of you? I can't do this no more. What did I do? What did I get myself into? My lowest point was doing a bid and calling all the niggas that I knew whose numbers by heart and nobody answered. No one. And I had to sit there. The same niggas that I was just eating with, throwing ones on bitches with, chilling, wearing chains, popping bottles. Not even there. Nowhere. As they say, the game is the game. Right. They don't know if you got a rat. They don't know if you go. They 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 don't. They, the phones is tapped because it's coming on a jail call. Right. They can't sit there and pick up the phone. You know, you gotta hold it down. You know what you signed up for. Basically, and that's what it really gets back down to. And it's a fucked up feeling. What are some of the pros and cons about being being um gang affiliated? Yeah. Um, the pros, I always say, like, I'm not really, I'm, I've never really been a materialistic person. Like, I really could care less for material things. I mean, it's nice to say that, you know, you had it, the second, the third. But I have much would have rather to have never to have had it than to have had it and lost it. So there's that. And then, um, the cons, everyone being scared of you. You know, your family not letting you come to Thanksgiving or not letting you go to weddings or come even come to funerals. You know her, we can we can tell her. Denying man. you to your Ooh. face. Uh-uh. Oh, I don't know. Real blood family members. Yeah. Old friends turning a blind eye. People you know hit them up, leave you on scene. Like shit like that. Like it's not all, you know, glitz and glamour with it. Um, things that you've done to people that even when you try to reconcile later on, not being forgived, like that hurts. Um, I would say that the cons really outweigh it more than the pros. People thinking that they own you for life just because they did a certain thing, Mm -hmm. which was actually nothing. Right. So... Uh, you want to leave us with a song or something? I, I love your voice. Oh, like, thank you, you. You 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 killed that. I want people to find you. I want okay. them to look you up. So you know yeah, I mean? y'all can find me on my handle, Siri Loves underscore. Um, I'll sing a little bit of the hook from the song that I have dropping featuring Trina, Real Roses. Um, this here is my testimony for the righteous. Them prayers availeth much. 
And please don't ever give up on love. Keep your faith strong. The test is gonna be long, but you gonna make it anyway. Yeah, you gonna make it anyway. I know you hear me when I say, trying times come to test your faith. This is Trapping Anonymous. My name is Chris Styles.